So, uh, thank you very much for joining this meeting. Uh, my name is Aliyu Amin Ahmed, the convener of Data Science Monitoring and Evaluation uh, Association. So this is the first of the series of uh, uh, meetings that we are going to hold starting uh, this December, but we'll continue next year. Uh, so we are going to have many uh, trainings for people that are interested in data science and monitoring and evaluation. So after this one, there will be another presentation by uh, another uh, expert. Uh, she'll be presenting on evaluation only, possibly tomorrow around the same time, but we are going to confirm. So this particular one is the foundation, is a starting point for monitoring and evaluation. You know, when you are interested in a profession, people that are in the profession, they can show you the way and it will help you learn uh, better or at least navigate the things that uh, is going on within the profession. So this is just an introductory part. Uh, I'll try my best to make it as simple as possible. So if you want more uh, details on the introductory part for the monitoring evaluation, I have a book published online. Uh, though it is uh, a little bit expensive, but I think uh, people are buying it. So you may just glance through or uh, buy it. Uh, it's, it's available on Amazon. So. What uh, I'm going to discuss is basically from the book. So there are some aspects that I'll explain to you better, and then you have opportunity to interact within the meeting so that uh, others can also, other experts can also uh, explain to you some concepts. So in this particular uh, topic, we are going to define monitoring evaluation and explain their importance, what I mean, I, by their importance because I look at them differently. So monitoring is different, evaluation is different, though they complement each other. So uh, we are going to look at the dif uh, differences between monitoring and evaluation. Also, we are going to look at differences between M&E and other concepts. M&E means monitoring evaluation. So we are also going to discuss some of the principles and concepts in the M&E uh, as a profession. Then we will identify the components of monitoring evaluation plan. So that is at least a foundation, like A, B, C, D of the profession. So uh, to define monitoring evaluation and their importance, I think we should look at several other things first so that we will lay the foundation before we properly define uh, monitoring evaluation. And then we are also going to look at monitoring separately from evaluation. Then we come and combine them together at the later stage of the presentation. So the concepts that I want us to understand are some of the buzzwords going around in the profession. Uh, as a beginner, you will be hearing those buzzwords, but you will be wondering what they are. So we are going to look at those words uh, just to remind us and then to also uh, lay solid foundation for our discussion. The first thing you usually hear when you are discussing M and E is a uh, strategic plan. Uh, strategic plan is a very uh, like comprehensive document that tells you what your program is going to do over a period of time. So it spells out the objectives, it spells out the strategies, it spells out even the strengths, weakness, opportunities, and threats of the program and so on. So it is a very important foundation document for discussing M and E. Then the second thing you will hear mostly is frameworks. Uh, uh, the basic ones are maybe the resolve framework, logical framework matrix or LFM, 
logic models. And these are just like tools that will help you plan how you are going to do your monitoring evaluation. So in them, you will see the goals, the maybe verifiable indicators, you will see the kind of uh, assumptions that you have put in place, but the two are a little different. The result framework is a little bit different with logical framework, but they do basically the same thing. They serve the same purpose kind of. So, but uh, logical framework is more detailed. Then logic models. So most of the time, people in this profession look at things from a logical perspective. So everything is like linear. When you do this, you are going to expect this. So let's say when you have money, then you train people, you are expecting that they are going to learn something from the training and they are going to use it to improve their life. So it's, it's a logical, uh, the professional money is logical. So uh, it's based on what we call uh, at the basic level, the result check. So where we have inputs like the money, time, resources that you put. You know, in a project, you have two things. You have the project description, you have the budget, you have the finance. So the finance aspect or the people you employ to implement your program are the inputs to that program. And then they carry out certain activities uh, to deliver certain things, certain uh, outputs or products uh, so that they can achieve certain results. So when you, I say outputs, for example, if you have money, you carry out an activity of training. Training is an activity. You are going to have maybe, let's say, 20 people trained by you. So this is an output. You are able to train 20 people. But the outcome is that these people are able to learn something and then use it to improve their lives or improve their programs and so on. So that logical chain, that uh, chain, we call it result chain. So it's the relationship between all these things in a linear form. That's how we look at things. So it's mostly logical and linear. So another thing you will hear frequently is performance monitoring plan. So you have a program, there's a program description, there's a budget. So, but also within that program description, you are supposed to have a small uh, document that will tell you how you are going to monitor that program. It is called performance monitoring plan. So in that performance monitoring plan, it contains that result framework. It also contains how the program monitor evaluation is designed. It also contains maybe the indicators that you want to track. Uh, then also uh, indicator reference sheets and so on. So that document is like the document that as an m &E, you are going to start with to implement your program. All these things, we are going to discuss them in detail in subsequent presentation, but I want you to uh, understand them as we lay foundation for the discussion of monitoring evaluation. Then m and &E system is the big picture that contains everything, all the strategies you want to deploy to carry out your monitoring evaluation. But also, you should understand that monitoring evaluation profession depends largely on data, both qualitative and quantitative data. So you need to collect data, you need to analyze data, you need to also ensure that your data is of quality. So there will be data quality assessment, that is what we call DQA, that you do regularly. Then in monitoring evaluation practice, you have what we call indicators for measuring your performance. But these indicators always have what we call baseline, the starting point, where you are starting. So indicators tells you how you are doing in your program. For example, 
if your program is to train people uh, maybe on M&E, that's your program, right? So that program will have indicator to measure certain things within the program. It will be able to, maybe you can have your indicator to measure number of trainings you are going to conduct. So number of trainings conducted is a measure that you are going to use because it will vary. As you do the trainings, it will be increasing and you'll be counting and you'll be putting under that uh, indicator. You may even count number of people participating in the program. But in m &E, you don't only count people. You have to also disaggregate to know which kind of people. Is it male or is it female? Is it policymakers? Is it uh, community leaders? Is it people with disability? So everybody want to get all the details as you are counting on this, your variables, the indicators. But always for m and &E, you don't start something without knowing the, the starting point. So the starting point is the baseline. So if you come to train people, you need to know whether they were trained before. If they were trained maybe last year, is a different thing. If they are they were trained this year, it's a different thing. Because if they are trained this year, last year it has gone. Uh, the budget, everything has gone for the year. But now you if they are freshly training them again this year, then you count for the year. So usually maybe the it's annual targets that you said or life of project targets. We are going to discuss all these things. So targets is what you plan to achieve. So you maybe example in this uh, in the data science motor evaluation association we want to train one thousand people over the next one year. So our target is one thousand people to be trained. So as we are moving, when we train five, we will count five. So then we do one thousand minus five remain nine hundred and ninety five. As we move, we now count. So we have a target. We may go above our target, or we can come down below because of maybe lack of resources, participation is poor or something like that. So we will explain, okay? So you know now indicators, baseline and targets. Then also risks and assumptions. There is nothing you can do in this world without a risk. So as M&E, you have to also anticipate your risks so that you can write them down and try to overcome or try to uh, uh, adjust to meet up and so on. So risks is very important, something that you need to measure in monitoring and evaluation as you are implementing your program. So there is something I want you to understand before we start discussing M&E. M&E actually is working with what you have already planned to do. So you sit down and have your strategic plan and say you want to do this, you want to do that, you have your goals, you have your objectives, then you track those. So Eman is always working with what is already planned to see how you are achieving it logically, okay? So now this is the concept that you hear from time to time when uh, you join the Eman profession. So now, Let's start from the beginning. Monitoring. So what is monitoring? The word actually explains itself. Monitoring. To check something. To check something and see how it is uh, maybe going on and so on. So monitoring is a continuous process of observing, checking. But you are not just checking you are also collecting data as you are checking. And this data can be both quantitative and qualitative. Even if you discuss with people, it's data. When you collect something, you count, is data. So everything to M&E is data, but they use systematic approaches to collect that data. So a monitoring, the purpose of that monitoring is to ensure that the systems you are operating are maybe um, um, achieving 
what you want to achieve in terms of the processes, in terms of the activities, in terms of the outputs, and so on. So you can do monitoring manually by you going there to verify and see it, but also you can use uh, tools uh, such as software, maybe Open Data Kit, uh, Cobo Toolbox, and so on, to collect data, uh, maybe through surveys and so on. Now, this collected data will help you know or track how you are doing in terms of spending your resources, carrying out your activities, and so on. And that information you get will help you inform your managers or inform yourself or implementers or policymakers so that they can make decision based on data. So it is useful for decision making. M and E, M is monitoring, E is evaluation. They complement each other, but monitoring is can be separate from evaluation, but it can be useful for evaluation. But uh, uh, I know sometimes uh, when I say this, it brings a lot of discussion that you can actually do evaluation without monitoring data. But uh, we can discuss that one uh, subsequently. So according to UNDP, they said monitoring is a process of systematic observation and collection of data on a system, on a program, on a process or activity over a period of time. The aim is to ensure that the system or process is functioning as you planned and identifying problems that may arise as you are implementing that program or project. So, Program can be long-term, multiple projects inside. Project can be only one thing that you are pursuing. So look at this graph carefully. It illustrates what uh, monitoring is all about. So at the starting point, don't forget, when you come to train people, as we mentioned earlier, when you come to train people, don't assume that they have not been trained before. Probably. They have been trained, some of them, maybe not all of them, but at least you are not coming to meet uh, something that is totally zero. Uh, we will discuss about setting your baseline at zero, but try to understand that even if you set your baselines at zero, you are not starting from empty place. So the graph for m and &E is starting with the baseline data. So if you did not collect good baseline, then maybe you will say, okay, let me start at zero. But no, you cannot say that when you, let's say, example, you want to provide community with water and you say number of uh, water points constructed. Maybe you can say constructed under the program. Yes, the baseline may be zero. But then at the beginning of your intervention, there may have been water points already existing. So maybe there are two, you want to add four. So that means that your baseline is at two and then your program has targeted to do four. So that means your graph is starting at two, then you are adding. So you may, uh, the addition you are doing is this curve, is a cumulative curve. Because when you do one and then do another one, two, you are adding one to one, making two. Then when you do another one, the third one, three, you are adding one to two, making three. So that means if you are implementing a program, your results, I don't want to use the word results because it's a little bit high up. Your outputs are actually accumulated. That is, if you do activity for month one, yeah, you do, let's say, 100 things, month two, you do 30 things. Then at the point of month two, somebody will say that you have done 130 things, not only 
uh, 30, um, what do you call it, say 30, no. If you are carrying only that 30, you are going to miss the story because already you have done 100. So maybe your target is 1,000. So you can see when you count 130, you are going to subtract this 130 from the 1,000 and then you know what is uh, remaining. So, but if you just pick 30 for that particular month without reference to the previous month, you are going to miss out counting what you have already achieved before. So your data for, for uh, monitoring is actually accumulated over time until you uh, finish your project or at the uh, LOE, I mean, um, I, I mean, LOP, life of project. So when you finish your project, you will now total your results. So the data is always uh, accumulated. So the curve will continue to, to grow. Even if you don't achieve anything at maybe the third year, you still retain the, the total because you have already done 130. So it's only third year that you did not do. So you maintain 130 and explain that for this particular third year, you are unable to achieve uh, anything. So now monitoring. There are many types of monitoring you can do. Very many types. So uh, I've written a few ones here, but you can explore more through reading. So types of monitoring. You can have input to output monitoring, okay? Input are the resources you put, like the money, the time, the people you hire, and so on. So input that will lead to achieving output. So I have put 1 million naira. I'm able to train 1,000 people. So you can see the input of 1 million has led to achieving 1,000 uh, output. So this is input to output. You can monitor how this money is used to do with that result. Then process monitoring. You can monitor the activities you are carrying out uh, in the project. So at the inception stage of your project, you want to track the resources and then the kind of activities you are doing to lead you to achieving that um, output. Okay, so now you can also do financial monitoring. There are people who say, ah, financial, I don't have anything to do with finance. No, as a you have a lot to do with finance because the budget of the program helps you understand resource allocation within the program and what they are supposed to do. You can even say, okay, they are spending 1 million Naira to help 500 orphans. So you can divide 500, uh, 1 million by 500 to know how much it takes to, to help or uh, provide service to one orphan. So financial monitoring is very important to m and &E, not only for cost per targets, but also you know where money is uh, allocated and then where it is spent. I know that uh, practically the people in programs or would like to maybe uh, distance m and &E from money. But no, you are supposed to work together. This is this project you are implementing is not your personal thing. It is something that you are doing to achieve result for either government agency or a donor or a philanthropist, but at least you are here to achieve this. So there should be transparency and accountability. m and &E should be able to understand the money within the program so that they will check the cost that they are spending to achieve results so that they will advise how best to optimize, minimize cost, maximize achievement of result. So then also compliance monitoring. Compliance monitoring ensures that the laws and regulations and other requirements are being followed by the organization. And then somebody will say, ah, auditors can do compliance, uh, compliance, then why are you interested? No. Yeah, man, you are interested in everything because you are there to track everything. 
So you need to help them understand that maybe there are code of conduct regulations or maybe there are uh, uh, environmental social regulations and so on that they are supposed to adhere to. For example, if you are implementing a program, uh, there will be maybe under construction of maybe uh, health facilities or construction of uh, sanitation uh, facilities or toilets in in a in a school or something, without monitoring compliance to ENS, you will see that you are not going to achieve the result that you want for even screening alone, screening of the of the environment that you are going to implement the program. If you don't do it, you will run a risk of even st they stopping your project. So you need to check whether they are complying with all the necessary uh, regulations for implementing a program. Physical monitoring. Physical monitoring is very, very critical. Don't just be reading documents I know sometimes uh, m and &E, uh, people that are doing m and &E in programs, they will just wait until they bring you report. And then you look at the report and then write, no, 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 no. As m and &E expert, you are supposed to see things, verify, collect the evidence, make sure it has happened. And at intervals, you need to go there and take pictures, take GPS location of the place, take progress of work. And then somebody will say, ah, are you an engineer? Yes, you are not an engineer. But as m and &E, you are supposed to see the things happening so that you know uh, accountability. If people are giving money to go and construct hospital, if you, don't, you do not see the time that they are doing, laying the foundation, They'll go and paint a hospital and give you tell you that they have done it. So that primary cancer healthcare center must have been constructed long before now, but they just went and painted it and then put maybe your own logo and so on. So as M and E, you are supposed to request to visit the field and take pictures, discuss with beneficiaries and so on. Even you going to the field. Uh, we are going to discuss the subsequent slides. There is a process of going to the field as M and E. You don't just carry your back and go to the field. No, you have to prepare yourself before you go to the field, so that you know exactly what you are looking out for when you get to the field. Then there is also result monitoring. It is a process of checking the outputs now that I've got. How are they uh, uh, delivering? the results that you want to see. So now here is a caveat. If we are implementing a result-based monetary evaluation system, result does not even start from the output. Example, if it's a government of Nigeria, government of Nigeria is not interested in the outputs only. It's the result, how this thing that you are doing is improving the lives of people. You bring palliative, you keep in the store, you have procured the palliative, you have studied in the, but are people receiving the palliative? That is what is important. Are they receiving it? So is, is even the result is more important than the process in M&A. &E. Then also context monitoring. You need to understand the situation where you are operating so that if there are risks, or unexpected uh, things may arise, whether politically, institutionally, you will monitor and tell. And this is very important because some of us are implementing our monitor evaluation uh, activities in resource constrained areas or conflict areas. So you need to understand and monitor the context and the risks so that you don't fall victim of some things. So it's very important also. Then somebody will ask me now, uh, what about the security experts? The security experts, they are doing the day-to-day -day, uh, security issues. But you are supposed to know how many incidences of insecurity happened in a particular community. You need to track all those things so that you make informed decision whether you should uh, strategize or go or not to go or work with the people at the location rather than you 
traveling. So tracking those incidences and keeping the records will help you make informed decision. Also, you can do beneficiary monitoring. That is, you now monitor how the beneficiaries are perceiving your project, whether they are direct beneficiaries or indirect beneficiaries, you need to monitor to know their perception. So your engagement with them when you visit, you can just, yeah, some people may try to use participant observation approach, just you observe and you to check what is happening. You don't even have to talk to them. You look at the environment, see how they are interacting with each other, whether there are people that are marginalized within the community, whether women are not allowed to participate in leadership positions and so on. So all this you can you can monitor. Also, you can do organizational uh, monitoring. As the name implies, you can track if the organization is having all the necessary uh, capacity uh, to implement the project. I, uh, you can use several tools. I, uh, I check uh, maybe here um, I give example of OCAT, Organizational Capacity Assessment Tool. That one is a basic tool that you can use to check how organization is in terms of its own systems and so on. You can apply that maybe year one and check again year two how it is changing, whether it's improving or not improving. So you can also monitor that one especially if your program is actually there to build capacity uh, of uh, organizations. It is a very wonderful tool to use. We can uh, give you some uh, training on that within the within next year. So still on types of monitoring, performance monitoring. So performance is achieving your own uh, targets, right? And your results. So you, but all your targets, as I mentioned earlier, it is all your targets are predetermined. So it's something that you set for yourself and you don't just set targets like that. You set target based on available resources, based on the time that you have to implement the program, based on so many factors. So you can monitor how you are doing in that way. Impact monitoring. So you can also monitor long-term how the project is doing uh, compared to the population. And then maybe some people ask, uh, impact, is it not uh, evaluation? Well, to achieve the impact, there is a process that leads to the impact. You can monitor that one. And also uh, you can monitor uh, uh, environment. Here, we are not talking about the context. We are talking about the actual natural environment. Because uh, environmental safeguards uh, issues will require you to check whether there are grievances as a result of implementation, whether people come and construct something and left debris, whether there are uh, things that uh, maybe people are constructing something on graves of other ancestors, all those issues you need to monitor uh, so that you don't it will affect your program. So you need to monitor that one too. Then before I go to the tools, I see about nine uh, uh, chat comments. So maybe I will check and see. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, thanks. Uh, basically people are saying seriously, I'm learning from this, thank you and so on, internet connectivity and so on, okay? So let's discuss monitoring tools. But I put M and E here. The reason why I put M and E tools, I do not limit them to monitoring because some aspects are useful for evaluation too. If we are working in a program, it's most likely 60% or 70% of your work is actually on monitoring. So these tools are basically the tools that you are going to be using regularly as a beginner in this profession. And even when you become an expert, you, you are going to still 
uh, you are going to be using the, the tools. So here are some of the tools. There are many tools in monitoring, very many. Okay. So the first tool, remember what I said earlier, your own strategic plan, your own resolve framework, these are the foundation documents. And for you that are applying for, for funding or grants from donors, your own program description, your own budget, your own m and &E plan. You see, every organization you have, you can break it down into three components. People that are managing the money, the finance, uh, accountants, finance and admin, all those people. Then people that are implementing the programs and then people that are monitoring and evaluating the program. So it's these three components. So now the document that is joining all of them together is the project description and the budget. Within the project description, there is a, an m and &E plan. So inside the project description, there is a reason why this project or program or policy or anything was started. That the reason what change they want to see happen. That reason is called theory of change. The overall thing, although theory of change is logical because it will say like, maybe if I do this, if I pro do this, then it will achieve this and then it is going to eventually lead to this change. So it's literally like an if and then kind of uh, relationship. So if you provide training, then people are going to understand and gain knowledge, and then they are going to use the knowledge to improve their systems. So that theory of change is the starting tool for you. Because without having that theory of change, you are not going to understand how to implement your m and &E. It's just like a general in the army. He needs the rich map to understand the landscape where the war is going to be implemented. The same thing with you. You need the theory of change to understand your program better. Now, the next thing you need is logical framework or the result framework. Because the logical framework or logical framework matrix is called LFM or log frame. They give you visual and simplified representation of everything that you are doing in your program in a single sheet of paper. So it will just say, if, uh, if I implement this, it will achieve this under this assumption. And then if I achieve this, it will lead to this under this assumption. So that is the log frame. It will also help you because that log frame tool is a tool that is designed by everybody at the beginning of the program. Uh, or revised by everybody. Maybe they design and put it in the agreement or in the proposal. So you need to come back and sit down, reflect on it and agree with your funder or with the program uh, uh, this thing. Then RICS registers. You see, don't forget RICS. Register the RICS and you can manage it better. I'm managing RICS, maybe you can avoid the RICS or you can transfer the RICS or you can take the calculated risks or so on. So, but you have to register all the risks so that it will help you know how to, how to manage and achieve your results. Also, your budget. You see, budget is very important for m and &E because it helps you know the entire resources allocated to the program. I'm not saying that you must look at salaries of people. No. Salaries are negotiated separate and they can be secret. But at least the total amount of money spent for HR can be there, you will know. So you can know the budget lines. You can know whether they are moving uh, uh, from budget line to another budget line without approval and so on. So you should be able to know all that. Then project management software. That one too is going to help you know how to put together everything under your program. 
But I am telling you the most critical and important thing, M and E, especially the people in, in the office monitoring people, they use most frequently is the key performance indicators or indicators because they help you measure progress. And then indicators, don't say because you are an expert or you like M and E, you go and put too many indicators, 20 indicators, 25 indicators to track a project of maybe $2 million, $3 million. No, you should have reasonable indicators under each component or objective of the program so that you can manage. Because anytime you are putting indicators, you should have to be mindful of the amount of money you require and time and energy. So don't burn yourself out. I agree on few indicators to track so that you can track them very well. Because if you put indicators, you are supposed to also conduct data quality assessment on those indicators regularly every six months. You are supposed to collect data on them. You are supposed to analyze the data. You So many things. So don't bog yourself with too many indicators. Okay? Tools for monitoring. Gun charts. You see, this gun chart uh, that you are using for work plan, you say, uh, January, I'll do one, two, three things you list. February, I'll do this, then they will overlap. This, this is a very important tool for m and &E. The reason why it is important, because the listing of the activities you plan to do in January, if you cannot do them in January, you have to move some of them to February and tick the one that you have done in January. So if you see, the, maybe there are five things in January, six things in February, three things in March, and then you see in January they only did one. Then they move four to three, making uh, uh, seven. And you know that they put three activities before because in that March there is holiday. You know you are in trouble. That means that this project is heading for uh, challenges. So as m and &E, Every year, every uh, year you have a gun chart in the form of a work plan, but every month you have to bring out all the activities you are going to do for that month, list them out, know what is supposed to be done by who. Then now you carry the activities, follow up with the people, tell them, oh, we are supposed to do this, we are supposed to do that, so that by the end of the month, they, they deliver. Because if they don't deliver, it will procrastinate, they, they now move to another place, to another month, another month. Then towards the end of the project, you see nothing is achieved. So I will advise you to use your gun charts very well because it will help you uh, track all the tax and then if there are potential bottlenecks, you can address them. Work breakdown also, you need to break down the work, who is doing what and so on. Data visualization, is very important. There are softwares that are doing data visualization. This data visualization just simplifies how you are going to maybe see the activities uh, and communicate with, with policymakers or with your program people. So when they see bar chart, they will see easily where you are performing. Uh, this month, the bar is longer. Next month, is slower. So you can, it's shorter. So you know that whether you are achieving or not achieving. So visualization is very important. And then you need to learn some software like Tableau and so on. Uh, Microsoft, uh, Business analytics, analytics and so on. You need to all uh, start learning and using them as you grow in your profession. Impact assessment tools. There are many tools. Uh, what comes to mind, maybe SWOT analysis or, uh, or PESTEL analysis, several other uh, socioeconomic uh, analysis tools, you can use them also. Survey and interviews are also important for collecting data from beneficiaries especially. You can just design your survey, put it on ODK or, or COBOT to collect and then put them up and then people are going to uh, fill up and then use the information. Participatory uh, m and &E tools, they are also uh, very important uh, so, so that uh, you can track your own performance uh, together with the beneficiaries. Then dashboards, you see now there is growing interest 
uh, m and now is becoming more, uh, what do you call it, computer-based, computer-oriented. There is more demand that you should have dashboard for each program, you should have scorecards for your programs and so on. The reason is that it helps present your performance in a nutshell uh, with good uh, visualization. Now, some of the tools I said can be useful also for evaluation, like the, like the surveys are, are useful for, for uh, getting collecting data, even for data for, for evaluation. It can be helpful. Dashboard are useful because already the results are, are, are placed for people to understand how far you are going, okay? So data collection and reporting tools for M and E. You have so many of them in your program, but many people don't pay attention to these tools. As common as it is, you go to programs, attendance sheet, people say, ah, every event we have attendance sheet, we collect attendance sheet, but do you really know how to use attendance sheet? Because I see some programs have attendance sheet, but they don't put male and female. They don't even track people with disability. They don't even uh, track maybe the, 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 the phone numbers of the people. In fact, some data attendance sheet, you see they put one sheet and put day one, day two, day three, day five. And then people will just come and tick. They want tick. They, no, 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 no. It's not like that. Attendance sheet is supposed to be filled every day by every participant. Even the way people fill attendance, you know who came late, who came first. You understand me? So make sure that you use our attendance sheet very well. Field data sheet, collecting data from the field. You don't just visit field like that. You need to develop data collection uh, tools from the field for you to collect data from the field. Question guides to help you talk to people. Don't just go, ah, I have experience. I can talk to people. Then now you just go and carry your car, go to the field. No, it's not a good practice. You need to plan ahead, have meetings, plan for going to the field, use the questions you want. Because going to the field, you are collecting data. You're not just going there because you want part DM or whatever. You are going there to collect data for the program. So you have to prepare very well. Monthly reports are very important. Don't wait until quarterly report. You do your monthly report. It will help you write better uh, a quarterly report. Then performance data tables. These are very important to, as a snapshot of how your indicators or how you are going on. I mean, how you are, you are doing on your indicators. There's a snapshot like uh, when you come to the hospital, they give you a small cut, you go home. So that small cut will give you information about you. But when you come, you present, they bring your your own, what they call cut, that have all the uh, diagnosis and other things inside. So that PDT is very important. But PIRS, Performance Indicator Reference Sheet, that is the most important of all the tools that you in M and E are going to use. Performance indicator reference sheet will tell you the indicator, tell you the definition of the indicator, how data is collected, how data is analyzed, how data is reported. All these things, PRS can help you. Then quarterly reports. Quarterly reports are also very important because these are usually a requirement when you agree with your donor and you submit your report quarterly. So don't just do a template, send. People are very lazy to fill quarterly reports. They say, hey, why not you give us just Excel sheet, we put the results. No, 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 no. For each indicator, when you, you say number of people trained, uh, let's say 15, uh, and then maybe male, uh, eight female seven, you don't just put like that and leave it. No, you need to explain. The training was conducted for uh, policy makers 
on so, 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 and then this and that and that. We train them on this and that and that. We targeted to do so, so, so number, but we were able to only achieve so, so number. You need to have narrative on each of your indicator on your report. And as M and E, you are not writing English report. You are not writing textbook. You are writing report for M and E, and your report should be on the data that you are collecting, on the indicators you are tracking, on the templates that are given to you. If you write very good report, eight pages can give you more detail than somebody writing 40 pages and then all, all is English. No. Focus on the result. Focus on your performance against your indicators. Contract agreements are important because they are related to the project description that, so that you, it helps you maintain focus, especially you people implementing World Bank projects. You have to know that uh, program operation manual, program appraisal uh, documents, and then appendices to the program operation manual, all these are critical, even the financing agreement, they are critical for your own M&A &E work. You can reference to them. So you don't just uh, have contracts there and, and agreements there. Uh -uh. They are very helpful. Field reports. When you visit field, try your best to at least write something and try to use a template so that you maintain consistency in your own uh, reporting. Because if you have very good template, you can actually uh, compare over time. But if you don't use a template, you may be missing certain variables when you go to the field. So usually have a this thing, template for collecting data when you get to the field. The resolve framework and log frames are very important tools for your own uh, data collection and reporting because they have all the indicators of interest. So here is an example of an attendance sheet, uh, but it's not perfect, but you can adapt some of it. Title of the activity, date of the activity, vein of the activity, name of the participant, organization, department, position, address, sex, whether they are PWD, or um, their email, phone number, but also they have to sign. Now, if the handwriting is the same on your own attendance sheet, you should reject it because it means that somebody has sat down to write for people. And then don't take the excuse that uh, uh, some, some of the beneficiaries uh, are, are, are unable to write, they write for them. No, it's not like that you have to make sure that people write by themselves, no matter how. Uh, don't allow only one hand writing because it will impact on your data, quality of the data you are collecting. When you do workshop, don't just come and present and go, please. Because I see now NGOs, most of them are not operating like before. Workshops are avenues for you to assess uh, and collect data. Collect data on the presentation, whether people are happy with the presentation, whether what they have learned. Collect data on the objective of the workshop, whether it is well understood and people have gained from it, materials be provided to them, the training objective, whether they are met. All these things, every time you do workshop, collect data from the participants. It's very important. Then Field activity, before you go to the field, have a checklist so that you know exactly what you need before you go. Don't just assume everybody under, understands what you are supposed to do at the field. Have a checklist. Have you done this? Have you called, in fact, even basic thing like a uh, checklist uh, for items you need to go to the field, like camera, uh, tick. Uh, attendance sheet, available, tick. Everything that you need to go to the field have a checklist so that you don't go to the field and forget it. And then because you have forgotten it, you are unable to use it. Then work plans, I've explained them clearly, very important for you to use for your reporting. Okay? So now we have learned what is M&E. We have learned monitoring. We have learned monitoring tools. We have also uh, learned um, some uh, concepts 
like frameworks and so on. So now I'm going to tell you how we are going to carry out M&A, &E, especially monitoring. What approach are you going to do? Because when you are employed to do work as M&E, &E, how are you going to start? How are you going to start this monitoring? You are hearing monitoring, how are you doing, going to do it? So first, before you start your monitoring, the first thing you need to do is to understand the theory of change of the program, the goal of the program, and the objective of the program. Then next, you identify the indicators that are going to be used to, to monitor the program. Then you set baseline on the indicators. If you don't set baseline, you will not know even when you get there that what you I want to go, because you do not know even where you started. So you should have very good baseline. If they tell you to put zero, well, you can put zero, but under the program. But there is another baseline that need to go to the field to collect. Example, if people are saying that they want to construct uh, hand pumps in a particular local government, there exists some hand pumps now. So the baseline is the number of hand pumps that are currently existing before you come to implement your program. So try your best to make sure that you know the baseline as you are implementing your program. The next thing you need to do is to have your own monitoring plan. The next, you collect data on the indicators and you analyze the data. Next, when you analyze your data, you then report your findings. But as you are reporting your findings, you are going to maybe see that there are issues you need to address. So you need to take corrective action so that it will not, you will not repeat it so that you can improve what, on what you are doing. Because M&E work is about proving you have done something and learning to improve on what you are doing, always. Then also, uh, monitor the progress, adjust your approach as you go. Because every time monitoring uh, as an M&E expert, you are learning. You learn, then you improve. Then I told you that I'm going to talk to you about monitoring visits, but let me check the comments and see whether there are questions. Okay, okay, nothing much. It's just about asking whether we are going to share uh, the slides. Of course, um, we are going to share the slides soft copy. If you want the recorded version, we are also going to share with you. It's intended for you to build on your capacity as we move forward. So then also the the Conducting uh, monitoring visit. This is very important, especially to you guys that are from the ministry. You know, you go for 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 visits regularly, but then the way the visits are done, sometimes is not the way monitoring uh, and evaluation wants it to be done. You carry people, enter car or travel, collect your per diem. You go to the field. And then uh, maybe the orgas sometimes they are busy, they come back or they go somewhere again, official work, and then they leave the money officers. You come back, they come and write report. Or maybe somebody have naming ceremony or something, put him on the field so that he can get something to go and do his naming ceremony. No, 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 no. Monitoring visits are very important in program implementation. You don't just go like that. So how you conduct monitoring visit is, I will uh, explain step by step. Before you decide to go to the field for monitoring visit, you need to review your documents so that you know the scope of the current information you have in the office and then what you need from the field and what you need to do. Because if you don't know that a particular location so, 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 so things are happening. When you go there, how will you know? So you have to 
get all your data, review your documents first. Review all the reports and the result achieved from beginning to the period that you are going to the field. Then have a meeting among yourselves in the office so that everybody will understand what is expected to be done at the field during this monitoring. You don't just go for a month. No, when you go, you are supposed to do this. You are supposed to do that. You are supposed to do this. You are supposed to take pictures. You are supposed to measure this. You are supposed to talk to community leader. You are supposed to talk to women leader. You need to apportion all your work to everybody should have something to do. If somebody don't have anything to do, it should not follow you to the field. Except if he's the driver or she's the driver. Then after you are debriefed, you know what you are doing, you know the tools, you know the information, you then go and conduct the monitoring tour. But before even going to the monitoring tour, two weeks or one week ahead, inform the people or the contractor or the field, whatever, that you are coming. And then somebody will say, ah, if I inform them, they are going to adjust things. Uh -huh. Your aim is not to witch hunt anybody. Your aim is to make sure that people achieve their result. So inform them, because if you don't inform community people, they will go to the farm, you come, they are not there, and you feel that they are, and they, even the contractors, they may have finished something, they are rested. And then when you come, you don't meet them. Don't you know that there are people that before you come to the with you, they will just disperse, and then you come and not meet them, and then you write a report. No, 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 do no harm. When you are going to the field, inform people that you are coming. So ahead of time, so that they can prepare. Even tell them what you want to come and see. So then now you conduct the monitoring visit. Then you analyze the data, prepare a report. Aha, uh -huh. preparation of report. You know, people, when they find some problem in the field, they say, I don't catch them. No, 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 it's not like that. Or you come and write a report and tell your friends within the office, and then without informing your boss, you say, ah, they are chopping money. No, 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 it's not like that, please. When you write report, approach your boss and say, this is my draft report for your kind review. Then he will tell you, okay, uh, this aspect need to be strengthened. We need to get more data on this. We need to provide. It's good for you to, to inform your superiors and then get their concurrence. But then somebody will say, what if they want me to change data? Ah, don't do that. Oh. Don't change data. What the data shows is what it is. The only thing is you are asking them to explain or to advise you or to give you superior knowledge. So changing data, even if somebody superior tell you to change it, unless there is evidence to support that data, don't change data. I will tell you a story. You know, a friend of mine told me she was doing evaluation somewhere, and for the whole year, the data is consistent, 90-something, 80-something attendance rate for girls. But a particular month, it dropped to 20-something. And then the people say, if everything is 90-something, that is 80-something, 90-something, why not you adjust this one? She said, no, how can I adjust? It's what the data shows. And then they were angry with her, but then they went to the donor and made a presentation. When they presented, the donor said, ah, this is the reason why you are hired to evaluate. Because this particular month, there was conflict within the community and we wanted to know how it affected uh, or impacted on girl child. And then we have a grant that will strengthen this thing. And it's like $3 million to, to, to help them. So you see, if they are adjusted, they have lost their money. And then they are here, she, the person has like integrity issues. So M and E, we are in fact uh, more credible than even accountants because we are dealing with so many things that uh, so you have to maintain ethics of the profession. Dissemination of result. You disseminate the result to the client. You don't publicize the result immediately. You need concurrence, you need approvals before you disseminate data. And then even at that, there is knowledge management. Certain people may not need your whole report. Let's say somebody is selling Akara. If you give them the, your report, they will use it for Akara purposes. But if you put a poster 
and say this is why we are with immunization of children in this community. They see the poster, they did the picture, they like it and keep it. So you have to know how to manage how you disseminate the result. Okay. Now, monitoring that you are doing or visiting with your bosses is not supervision. So if your monitoring involves directing, managing, overseeing subordinates, it's no longer monitoring. It is supervision. And supervision is done by the top management. It's not done by m and &E. Now, in preparation for the visit that we discussed earlier, there are key things or things that you need to check very well. One, ensure that you have clear field guide, how you are going to visit the field, what you are going to do at the field. Who are going to go to the field? Are you engaging a consultant? Are you going to with staff? Are you going with, with the maybe experts or engineers and so on? Then also, what kind of competence do these people have when they go to the field? It's very important because you, you go and do certain service at the field. Then also inform the stakeholders before you come. Ensure you do no harm. Do not go to the field and come back and they sack somebody. No. Don't come and report the person did this. No, focus on the project. Focus on the delivery of the project. Don't say that this one don't like my face. This one, no, 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 no. You are being personal. So do no harm. Ensure that Whatever you are doing, you are not creating confusion or you are not discrediting an individual. You are focused on the results. Maintain credible fieldwork. Maintain neutrality. Do not be biased. Anything you say as an m and &E expert should not be biased. Do not say anything that just out of emotions or everything should be objective. Don't be afraid to speak the truth to power. Just say exactly how things are. Then conduct your uh, side review. What I mean by side review is that when you go to the field, you collect data. Don't say when you find a problem, you keep it and hide it until you come and write report. No, when you find a problem, try to discuss with the people at the field. Discuss with them. So that they will tell you why that problem. You have a debrief with them. Allow them to make presentations. When you, are fin you finish your field work, tell them what you have found. Tell them what you have seen so that they will also give you their feedback. Then if the thing that you got from the field is not sufficient, there is no harm for you to follow up. They may give you data at the field, but they'll tell you that that particular document as evidence is not available because commissioner so 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 is not available. Uh, maybe next week when it comes out, I'm going to take a picture and scan it and send it to you. So follow up to get that picture so that you can include it as evidence. Now you have learned M and E, you have learned tools for M and E, you have learned how to go to the field. You have also learned what to do and what not to do. So this is about M and E. So I will briefly discuss evaluation here, but this particular uh, engagement with you today is not going to go in depth on evaluation. The one for tomorrow will go in depth on evaluation. So um, uh, another facilitator will take you on that. And then subsequently, I will discuss more uh, in depth on maybe Mosquitoes uh, stories and also uh, discuss maybe outcome mapping, uh, uh, randomized control trials, and so on on evaluation. But now it's just to introduce what is evaluation. So, evaluation is different with M and E. I mean, with M part of the M and E. Evaluation is a is not a continuous process because. Monitoring is a continuous process. Evaluation is a periodic process. So it's a process to objectively assess effectiveness, impact, and value of the program. It involves collecting and analyzing data and measuring the outcomes 
against established goals. Okay, let me tell you why it is so. Evaluation happens at different points in the program. But even before you start your program, you must have done evaluation to set the baseline while you are starting. Then after some time, you come and check how you are doing. Then when you finish, also you come and see what you have achieved. So evaluation is done at different points, okay? Evaluation can be an independent assessment. It also can be self-assessment. You can assess yourself. You can evaluate yourself, your program by yourself in the program, but you can also bring an independent person. So we as experts in M&E, this, we, we, this is what we do for a living, evaluation. So as you're entering this profession, if you want to be a consultant, if you want to make some resources here and there, your focus should be on evaluation practice because that is where actually you use your skills. So evaluation purpose is to assess effectiveness, impact and value of your program, whether it is social return on investment, whether it is um, value for money, whether it is uh, impact and so on. So the main purpose is to assess the change you want to see. Uh, it helps you determine whether the goal you set in your theory of change has been achieved. It also helps you to evaluate whether the program or, or project is making positive differences. But even if it is not making positive differences, evaluation will help you to learn on the unintended results. You can learn from the intended, but also from the unintended results. You can have unintended, you can have intended positives. You can also have unintended positive results. You can also have um, negative results. Of course, you cannot intend to have negative results, right? Then it guides you for future planning. So it is systematic uh, review of what you are doing, whether ongoing or completed. It determines relevance, whether with the people you are serving, you are actually serving them well, uh, whether you are achieving your uh, effectiveness, uh, being, achieving your objectives, that is effectiveness, and then whether you are achieving the impact of what you set to achieve. Okay? So this evaluation, when you conduct it, gives you credible information that will help you uh, in decision-making. And you can have lessons learned you can now uh, try to learn, because in M&E, there is also an aspect of L, M-E-L, M and E and learning, monitoring, evaluation and learning. So that learning usually comes after you evaluate. So you can evaluate internally, so conducted by you within your organization. You can evaluate also by engaging an external expert or external company to come and evaluate what you are doing. And then you can also collaborate with an external expert to do the evaluation. I like that joint evaluation because somebody cannot come to your program uh, just within two weeks, three weeks and say that they understand everything. So, but if you pair them up with your staff, they already know more about the program. They can help put context to the evaluation. So I, I really like um, joint evaluation. So evaluation helps us to improve what we do make informed decision, analyze the progress we are making, take stock of both our strengths and weaknesses, uh, learn lessons for future improvement, uh, get the uh, gather evidences, assess the effect or changes that is happening, and then reach out to the beneficiaries so that we can hear their own perception about the program and so on. So, Remember the, the chart I showed you earlier? It was a single line and it started at a point here. So, but in this case, evaluation is looking at, okay, you know, whether you do your program, you don't do your program, life goes on, people continue drinking water, people continue eating food, people continue, but with your program, 
you would like to see that there is certain improvement. So above what is happening. So the downline here is actually what is happen what ought to have happened without you. Then this upper line is what has happened with your program, with you. So evaluation tries to measure the difference. So a mistake that people make is they pick from here, from the bottom, up to this and attribute to themselves. No. What you can attribute to yourself is what you are able to achieve under your program. Then all the things maybe you have contributed, but you cannot say I did it all alone. So evaluation will help you sift out exactly what you are able to achieve. The difference between what ought to have been and what has happened as a result of your intervention. So there are two major types of evaluation. Uh, I see this one, um, Tola Data, uh, is a good company in Germany. So they group it into two, by timing and by focus or audience. So you can group your evaluations into these two types. So by timing, remember I said you can do evaluation baseline at the beginning and somewhere in the middle, somewhere, you know, by timing. So by timing, you can do evaluation at at least three points or four points, right? Why I say four points is that you will see why I say four points. At three points is at the beginning, that is the baseline. Then there is also, that is the baseline is called X ante. Then there is also a uh, midline or mid term. Then there is end line at the end of the project. But there's another one, ex post. After long period of time, you can also come and see the impact of your project. So maybe you do Fadama one, Fadama two. Then you come and see the impact of Fadama one after six years or after 10 years, you know? So that is ex post evaluation. So baseline helps you determine the starting point of your program. It's a reference point to see how you are going. Midline is conducted on an ongoing project. Uh-huh. Please note that midline is not at the middle of the project. Because if you have a, a six-year project, it's not after three years so that you do midline. No. If you see you are implementing two years and then you see no result, commission and evaluation so that you don't wait until it's three years, you mess up things. Focus on that, uh, what is understanding what is going on with your strategies. So you can conduct midline before the three years, you can conduct it a little bit after the three years, but at least don't restrict yourself to say midterm or midline is going to be at the middle. End of project. Immediately you finish your project, you can conduct evaluation. Uh, for people working with uh, USAID programs, they usually do um, uh, this kind of uh, projects uh, so that you can have a final report on the project and submit. Also, people implementing World Bank projects, you have uh, ICR, Implementation uh, Completion Reporting, you can also do that uh, at the end of the project. Then others doing uh, DFID projects, as, well, I mean, what do you call them now? FCDO, you can also do midterm, midline, and then at the end of the project and so on. So it's usually called end of project evaluation at the end. Then there is also ad hoc evaluation. So something may trigger you to to do an evaluation. You are spending money, you are not seeing results. So you can you can actually commission an evaluation to know what is going on. So that people are not going to blow all the money and not achieve results. Then you can do ex post evaluation. At the end of the project, after 10 years, five years, you can come and learn from the impact. You provided water. Are people maintaining the the boreholes after you have left, or you have left, the boreholes are not provided to other communities, 
and then people from another community would like to come and marry people from that community. So everybody migrated to that community and so on. So you can learn from it so that your project will not only uh, bring in positive, positive, that maybe there are negatives also that you need to learn from what you are doing. Then also type of evaluation by focus. You know, those ones are by timeline. So, but now you can do also evaluation by focus. That is maybe the kind of beneficiaries, the kind of things you want to see. So you can do formative evaluation. So this is conducted before the implementation of the program or immediately you start the program, you can do formative assessment. Then also there is process evaluation. Evaluate the process of implementation of the project so that you know whether actually the strategies you have set are working. Outcome evaluation. This is conducted after you have done your outputs. So as a result of the activities, you got some outputs and then as a result of the outputs, you are seeing some immediate uh, results. You can also commission evaluation without waiting until you have impact. Uh, I know those people that are working in uh, private sector, uh, every year is impact. So uh, in evaluation, actually, real impact happens after the outcomes are achieved. So then also summative evaluation, that is immediately you conclude your project, you can do summative evaluation. Impact evaluation is the long-term benefits or change you want to see, you can evaluate for that. Also, we have real-time evaluation. That is, if there is emergency, there is something you want to check, Ah, commission evaluation immediately so that you learn from it. You don't wait until everything's spoiled and then you come back. Participatory evaluation. Honestly, for participatory evaluation, this is exactly what we are supposed to do, especially for those that are in civil society organizations. You are not supposed to implement things like contractor. Uh, you come to community, Maybe you are giving them some assistance. You come, identify people, give them assistance, go back and say you have resolved. No, 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 no. You need to first of all, come and work with the people to understand what is their need, what you are supposed to do. Don't impose things on them. Even if you want to provide water to them, go and discuss with them what kind of borehole they want what kind of service they want. If you want to give them food, do you, you go and buy Indomie and go and share with them, do you think they like Indomie? They even go and get pie. So try your best to get them nutritious, something that is sustainable with their community. Because if you bring Indomie, you are exposing so many things to them. Because if you bring the Indomie now, it's not nutritious. It has a lot of uh, what do you, sodium and so on. I'm not demarketing Indomie, but at least, uh, if you uh, buy beans for them, tell them how to make pap or something or or soya beans or something. It's in the community. That's how you people in nutrition you have positive deviant models. Uh, about children where they you you study them, see what are they eating in their family, and then you now use that to help other community members. It's not like you carry things and dump. Work with the people. Even the evaluation. When you come, isn't that people are illiterate and they don't have anything? No. The fact that people don't speak English, don't write, doesn't mean that they don't have their own intelligence. So there is native intelligence. So, so sit down with them, draw the team. Participatory rural appraisal, participatory learning action, draw things, show them to come and check, do the community mapping. Let them know the location of uh, ball, location of church, location of monks, location of this and that stream. Ask them what are they seeing as diseases? How are the streams? Uh, do they get the water from there? Discuss with them. So participatory way of doing work is the best. But people have left it and are moving into contracting work. You just tick, 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 tick and say result. No, it's not like that work with the people in a participatory way to implement your program and do your evaluation. Thematic evaluation. You may come together several programs and ask uh, about gender issues, example. How is it in the, in the community and so on? You can do that particular theme and evaluate on it. 
You can also have cluster evaluation where uh, different programs implementing uh, humanitarian work or health work come together and see and evaluate. No issue of coordination, accountability, predictability of what they are doing. Then there is lastly, meta-evaluation. Evaluation of the evaluations that have been conducted in the past or evaluation of the evaluation you have evaluated. You check whether what you are done, the process, the methodology, the things are all well done. So that because there is what we call uh, maybe selection bias, there is uh, desirability bias, people tell you what you want to hear. Uh, there is so many things. So you need to do meta-evaluation to evaluate other evaluations. And then also there are criteria for evaluation. So this is the Development Assistance Committee criteria. So when you are evaluating, you can look for effectiveness, you can look for efficiency, you can look for relevance, you can look for impact, you can look for sustainability, you can look for coherence of the projects. So when you are looking for effectiveness, you are seeing whether the objectives of the program has been achieved. For efficiency, whether there is value for money, because some people can implement something, they can maybe build a school with 10 million naira, while other people can build the same school with 100 million naira. So the school has been built. Efficiency has, been, I mean, effectiveness has been achieved. The objective of building school has been achieved, but the money used by the uh, ten million is lower than the money used by the hundred million. If all the guidance and standards are followed, then that means the one that has spent more money is not efficient. There is no value for money. Relevance, whatever you are doing, is making sense to the beneficiaries. Then what are the long-term impact? And then if you finish, what is the exit strategy and how people are going to sustain it? So you need to, you can also evaluate. But my advice to you here, I see the mistake people make is that when they commission evaluation, they commission across all this, but it's not all this you need at every level. If you are just starting a program, you may need commission evaluation for relevance and efficiency, but you can we cannot expect impact at that time. Uh, you can expect sustainability. So try to focus because the tools you use for, let's say, uh, impact evaluation may be different with the tools you are going to use for efficiency. Efficiency, you can do social return investment calculation, value for money for calculation, and so on, or ROI return investment. But if you are doing for maybe impact, you may use uh, more significant change stories because uh, people can tell you the stories you analyze, outcome mapping, and so on. So there are different tools for different things. So try not to load your evaluation terms of reference with so many things. So the reason for it we evaluate is for accountability, for program improvement, for knowledge development, because we want to learn, but most importantly for social justice because we are intervening so that people that are marginalized, people that need the services actually get the services. Also for evidence-based decision-making, for quality improvement, for transparency and accountability, and also to ensure compliance with uh, regulations. So in a nutshell, in terms of uh, frequency, monitoring is continuous, evaluation is periodic. In terms of action you take, the monitoring actually measures activity to see whether it is on track, evaluation measures results. Who is doing monitoring? People in the project. Who is doing evaluation? People outside the project, and then people in the project, they can do joint evaluation. Who uses the information? Monitoring is only for you to do some minor uh, corrections in your program, maybe manager to know something is not wrong, is wrong so that you can improve. But for evaluation, it is high level. It tells you why things are happening. It may even lead to stopping a project or changing the strategies entirely. For the focus of the monitoring, it is on inputs, activities, and outputs. For the focus of the evaluation it is on relevance, impact, effectiveness, and so on. Decision level monitoring is minor action. Evaluation is my major action. So, but both of them are important for decision making. It helps you improve your performance and achieve your results. Then uh, M and E is a profession. It's different from other professions. It's different from inspectors. 
is different from auditors, is different from reviewers, is different from researchers. Why is it different? Inspection is the application of statistics to which you measure quality standards compare with the uh, distant, uh, stand, uh, on the standard uh, quality line and check whether there are differences, then we act on them. So for inspection, there are standards already set and we are afraid people are not going to meet the standards. So we now inspect like NAVDA, Standard Organization of Nigeria. So this is not m and &E work. Auditors, they are looking at compliance. They are safeguarding the assets. They use uh, evidences, but to show that things have, there is no, no fraud. When you go for a field, uh, let's say you travel, they will ask you to bring receipt, to bring a uh, hotel uh, invoice so that you don't charge laundry inside it and charge the hotel cost also. They check. When you enter plane, they say bring ticket stop. And then they check and see whether you caught it with uh, uh, scissors. Uh, only you went to one printer and print or actually it is real. So this is all to safeguard uh, uh, this thing the resources and they make sure that you comply with uh, regulations uh, that governs risk management, transparency and accountability. So this is not M&E. Review. Review has to do a little bit with M&E, but uh, actually it is distinct in terms of process because review is just like one assessment. There are two aspects of reviews. You can do book review, you can do review of something, uh, one-time assessment of something, it's not M and E because there are so many opinions there. You are not basing it based on your targets and so on. You just come and assess and see what is going on. Also, uh, it's very quick check of the progress uh, or operations aspect, like um, not necessarily looking at the result aspect. Is the operations, how things are implemented. So re review is not M and E. Research, research is not m &E. Even though some of the information may be useful uh, uh, or may contribute to a particular thing in m &E, but it's not m &E Because you know research is actually investigation based on certain theories, uh, topics, and then you say, ah, according to this, the theory of this and that and that, m and &E is not like that. m and &E, you plan to do something, have you done it? Have you achieved result or you do not achieve why? So it's not uh, research. Uh, it does not uh, inform decision making. Research is only, uh, they will ask you what is the significance of the study? What is the methodology? What value are you adding to knowledge? m and &E is not about adding to knowledge, m &E is about result. You plan to do something, are you transparent and accountable on this and have you achieved it? So it's very important for you to know. So in summary, Monitor and evaluation enable organizations to implement their plans, be efficient, learn from their mistakes, prove that they have achieved something, learn to improve continuously, motivate people to achieve results, and most importantly, help meet stakeholder uh, expectation. So for more books from me, you can check uh, comprehensive uh, uh, guide on data quality assessment is published on Amazon also, plus the other one, uh, the art of monitoring evaluation. It can also help you. But I know as we go through these trainings, almost all the components of my books, many of them, you can you can benefit from it through my trainings. Thank you very much. Um, I can now receive questions before